what's going on Ghost Squad just want to do a quick video uh, as we all know there was a tragic school shooting that happened in Broward County Florida yesterday um, our hearts and, and prayers go out to everyone uh, that was affected by the shooting I have a good friend of mine that most of you know Tack Daddy who uh, is directly affected by this the school was actually the high school that is two kids go to but they are safe and sound but that doesn't mean they were not affected I'm sure they've lost uh, friends and uh, loved ones um, so we want to send out our our thoughts and prayers to everybody uh, that was affected by this school shooting as with all uh, tragedies there is going to be some rhetoric and some talk uh, in the following days weeks months about could this have been prevented and what can we do to prevent this and naturally the the first go-to uh, is to let's ban guns um, this is a gun problem and if we ban guns none of this will will happen as we've seen unfortunately in the last six months we've had several uh, incidents whether it was the Vegas shooting or a couple school shootings um, the problem I have with this is that the knee-jerk reaction of let's ban guns seems to be at the top of everybody's list what I want to discuss real quick is let's look at the numbers uh, there are independent studies that are done every year um, regarding deaths in the US and on average there's roughly 32 to 33 thousand deaths by firearms every year that seems like a large number but let's look into those numbers a little bit more of that let's say 33,000 of them we're gonna say 22,000 of them on average are suicides so uh, we can take those out as far as homicides murders and all of that once you take the suicide rate out of it you're looking at 10 to 11,000 deaths per year by gun and that's including homicides, uh, negligent discharges, and then a, a category they call an undetermined reason. Um, if you're looking at the total number of deaths by firearms in the U.S., every year it averages out to be about 1.3% of deaths in America are by firearm. Now, that 1.3% also includes the suicide rate so if you take the suicides out of it you're talking about a very very small number if you look in the same numbers you're looking at deaths by vehicles deaths by vehicles are anywhere from 38 to 42,000 so we'll call it 40,000 deaths a year caused by by uh, vehicles I'm not trying to sit here and say that um, there isn't an issue with firearms in America what I am saying is we talk very very quickly when there is a tragedy with firearms as to banning guns but what we don't talk about is the 40,000 deaths by vehicle every year I don't see federal state and local legislation trying to be passed to ban the cars or let's regulate the speed of cars or in the drunk driving instance let's limit people to be able to only buy one beer at a time at the beer store instead of buying a 30 pack I don't see that legislation being passed I don't see that legislation being talked about every time that there is a death by a drunk driver or a vehicle manslaughter I don't see that happening but we do see every time that there is a firearm incident in America the quick knee-jerk reaction is to let's ban all guns I will say this do I think that there are things that could change and help uh, these incidents not to happen yes but banning guns is not the answer in my opinion and yes this is my opinion you may not like it and I understand that you may not agree with it that's okay if you look at the last few incidents that have taken place the Vegas shooting the church shooting in Texas the, the school shooting in California and now the school shooting in Florida what do all of these places and incidents have in common the people that were injured or killed were in a gun free zone you can call it what you want you can call it a soft target you can call it whatever you want these people were targeted by a shooter that knew that guns were not allowed in that area 
So instead of inviting this to happen by having these gun-free zones or soft targets, whatever you'd like to call them, why don't we, instead of having these gun-free zones, why don't we lead by example at the local and state level, and hopefully at the federal level, to sit there and say, these gun-free zones are rich environments for something bad to happen. Why can't we have teachers that are able and willing to carry at school, why wouldn't we allow them to legally carry inside of a school? If the state requires additional training, then let's get it for them to make sure that the, the local and state police are involved in the training of these teachers. But I'll tell you what, if there is an active shooter that's going to go out there and plan on attacking a school or a church, they are less likely to attack a school or a church. They know that there are going to be multiple people that have firearms with them. I do believe that that allowing citizens and teachers to carry at churches and at school will help prevent this onslaught of needless violence at schools and churches. Let's not talk about banning guns. Let's talk about how can we effectively hinder the ability of people to get into soft zones or gun-free zones and cause harm. If there are less gun-free zones, there are going to be less incidents of mass shootings. People are not going to take the risk of going and shooting somebody in a zone that they know that other people are going to be carrying firearms as well. Guys, like I said, there is no easy answer to the tragedies that have occurred the last six months. But one of the answers is not to ban guns. No matter what we think, the people out there that are going to want to cause harm to others, whether guns are illegal or not, they're going to get their hands on them and they're going to use them. So instead of hiding behind these laws that are going to be ineffective and useless, let's help the people that are willing and able to carry and protect ourselves and others, let's help them do that whether it's by letting them to carry in a church or carry in a school or any of these soft targets or gun-free zones you're just asking for people to come in that area knowing that no guns are allowed like I said the people that are looking to cause harm in these areas have a total disregard for laws they don't care what gun-free zones are all that means to them is they're the only ones that are gonna have them so let's let's start the leadership role in saying instead of banning guns let's enhance the gun presence in some of these areas to law-abiding responsible adults that are able and willing to carry this will help protect themselves and others in these gun-free zones guys everyone in florida our hearts go out to you I uh, know that you have the support of the entire country behind you there's not a whole lot we can do to help you except for sit there and say uh, we're very sorry for your loss. We're very sorry that this happened. There's no way for any of us to know what you're going through except for saying uh, we're very sorry. And uh, we hope that this tragedy and the deaths of these young people are not in vain. Instead of banning guns, let's make guns more prevalent and let's get rid of these gun-free zones. Let's get rid of these target rich environments for these people to come and do these terrible things and uh, let's move forward as a country guys this was a difficult one uh, to make uh, when you're always talking about the loss of, of lives especially children thank you for your time simplify